This election 2024 is going to be super. It's going to be great. Now, I like to talk about the NDC song that I'm going to play for you. It's a powerful song. And it has, it goes like this. I mean, tolerates my, my crooked voice. I'm going to play you the, the real song. Egbanzo, Egbanzo. Ata mills, John Mama, Quincy, Ahoy, Jenna, na double, double, eh, yes, oh, oh, eh, yes, ah. John Mama, eh, NDC, double, double. Ata mills, eh, NDC, double, double. Quincy, Ahoy, Kahu, NDC, double, double. Idris, Haruda, NDC, double, double. Eh, 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 banzo. Egbanzo, Ata Mills, NDC, John Mama, Jenna, Quincy, Ahoy, Double, Double, Eh, Yes, Oh, Eh, Yes, Ah. Egbanzo, Egbanzo, Ata Mills, NDC, John Mama, Quincy, Ahoy, Double, Double, Eh, Yes, Oh, Eh, Yes, Ah. John Mama, NDC, Double, Double. Ata Mose NDC double double. Aruna Idrisu Kahu NDC double double. Manasi Azuri Kahu NDC double double. Kwesi Prat Kahu NDC double double. Suleiman Brahma NDC double double. Okay, let's play the song. Somebody told me when I was going to interview you that he likes the way you dress. What is this? Are you Igbo? What is this cap? And this? Oh, I'm, I'm, the hat is Igbo. You know, and... you know Kusasi's, we, we know Kusasi's dress Kusasi's very well. dress very well, yeah. You know, we, 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 dress, we wear the Which smoke, we, what yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I mean, a lot of years in America should tell you that... Uh, the I'm, America is showing, pa. There is part and parcel of how, how I, you know... <laughs> That's Stephen too big. I have to leave it here. Thank you very much. Welcome again to the show. It's always a pleasure to come to you. So the uh, Catholic hymnal that we put on the piano, da, 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 da. those who know it, uh, Catholic hymnal, something. I know it. Send me a, a, a text message on Good Evening Ghana Official. What Catholic hymnal is it? If, let me give you a clue. Uh, May Peter's faith, this how it ends. May Peter's faith unyield in the path. To heaven for sure. Matters of Uganda, St. Catherine, St. Benedict, you people who are watching, please text me the thing. It's Catholic hymnal number what? This is how it ends. May Peter's faith unyield in the path 
to heaven for sure. We used to do that a lot. Okay, good evening again and welcome to the show. Tonight I have an apology to render. Is it an apology or is it a withdrawal? I explained. So I had a long conversation with Chrissy Pratt. Chrissy Pratt, he called me the day after the show last time. I, didn't, I wasn't able to pick up because I was in Kumasi. And then this afternoon, I, I, I think he called me. He said, Paul, why are you avoiding my call? I said, Uncle Chrissy, I'm not avoiding. He said, what were you doing caricature behavior on TV and mentioning my name with NDC? Are you a caricature? What, what, is that journalism? I said, Chrissy, calm down, calm down. What is the problem? He said, but why were you mentioning my name? I said, okay, today I'll come back on TV. I will redraw it. You are not a member of the NDC. It's just a joke. And I told him that, you see, people are home at 9 p.m. They've been working since 8 o'clock. You come at 9 p.m. to come and give them a TV show. You have to add significant entertainment. Otherwise, you're not helping them. You have to entertain the people if you can, if they will be entertained. Because sometimes you can be entertaining people and they are not entertained. They are actually very angry. Some comedians have that experience, they can tell you. So you have to attempt to entertain them. I don't know whether we succeed in doing so or not. Maybe we do because once upon a time, somebody said we are his favorite comedy show. So yes, perhaps we do. Uh, so I explained to Chrissy Pratt that, no, it's just entertainment. He said, go and change it. So tonight, I'll do that. I'll change the Chrissy Pratt narrative. But in addition to that, Chrissy Pratt has also published a statement for tomorrow's May Day ceremony. Uh, it's signed by him from the Socialist Forum, and I'll be reading that as well. And in talking about May Day holiday tomorrow, I'll be uh, sharing with you a letter that we are writing about holidays in Ghana. We are writing it to the Speaker of Parliament, to the Minister for the Interior, to the Attorney General, and perhaps to the Majority Leader in Parliament. It's about holidays in Ghana. That, that's coming up soon. But we have big stories tonight, don't we? A conversation, this is election year, you know, so a lot is going to happen. A conversation on radio between uh, uh, two parliamentary candidates, two PCs, um, Adenta Akusia Menu and Dr. Grace Ayensu on radio sparked a spiral of social media battle between NDC and MPP. What was said in, uh, on Omar Hine Kwabana Santis show? What was said? What aspired this? Uh, uh, that what aspired this whole spiral of uh, you are this and you are not a professor and I'm a professor and you are not a doctor and I'm a doctor and uh, the only thing that you have is your marriage and I mean it was deeply embarrassing. We'll be dealing with that in the, in one of our early stories. Uh, what the time now? Today I need more time. Nineteen minutes past the top of the hour at nine o'clock. This is good evening Ghana. So much more coming. Also, we'll go back to the Jenano Pokwajiman experience which is the launch that occurred at the UPSA last night. Uh, did I say last night? Last time. Now, the, uh, the story, the reason why we are picking it up again is that the last week we were unable to find time to uh, distill the method, the machinations of the national chairman of the opposition National Democratic Congress. His name is Johnson Asidun Katia. Now, he went to the UPSA event. Of course, he ought to be there. And uh, as chairman, he was given the podium to say something. What he said meant a lot. But there is a, a spirit behind what he said. And tonight, we have time to deal with that matter in some detail. Also, Imani uh, Center for Policy Analysis have published and issued a report on the last three months assessment of purely social media engagement with the two political parties, NDC and MPP, and the two run, uh, candidates, uh, the, Dr. Mohamed Baumia and uh, uh, President John Dramani Mahama. So they, they have issued it. We're going to look at it in detail. And we're going to applaud it. it. It looks like some good work that has been done. It doesn't have to be in anybody's favor. Some of it is in favor of Dr. Baumia, some of it is in favor of John Mahama. But ultimately, you see that Imani's work is cogent and some work that has been done. Not the thing that Musa Dankwa does. Musa Dankwa should stop doing what he does because it doesn't benefit anybody. It may maybe benefit him, which is okay. But if it benefits him, it shouldn't foister it on us. What Imani did, and which I'll show you, will indicate to you that this is proper work. We'll be, we'll be in that context looking at also a CNN poll that has just been released, which shows that 55% of Americans believe that Donald Trump's presidency was better. In bringing in the CNN poll, we're going to demonstrate that in, in the American election, similar to the Ghanaian election, the one who has been president before is running only on one thing. He's running on his record. He's not promising anything. Donald Trump and his team are running on Donald Trump's record from 2016 to 2020. That's their main campaign position. They do not have any other position. They're not promising anything. They are saying that this is our record. Now, as the CNN poll shows that in doing so, 55% of American voters believe that Donald Trump's presidency was more successful than what Joe Biden is doing. But we'll get to that in some detail tonight. Now, though, we start from the Alliance Arena where Vinicius Jr. has scored twice tonight to give Real Madrid a 2-2 draw 
at the Alliance Arena as they go over all the way to the Bidabao, I believe, in a week's time. But let's see what we have on our starting uh, sports with uh, Andy Terry. Okay, so uh, yeah, we'll come to this. We'll come to this. What happened tonight? Uh, so it was a game of two halves. Uh, Madrid, that was on the 24th minute, uh, scored a goal by Vinicius. And then funny the goal enough, came against a run of play. Yes, yes, yes. Funny mm. enough, uh, when the goal went in, Madrid had only played a shot on target, and that was the only goal they had scored. 24 minutes. Yes, Bayern had played six Heavily shots. Heavily against a run of play. Six, shot on, uh, six shots and four on target. So mm. it was a game of two halves. Bayern came in the second half very, very well drilled. It means that your uh, your man, that's Thomas Tuchel, mm -hmm. the, the, Bayern, the Bayern coach, uh, told them, you know, two. For the third minute, uh, Leroy Sainz scored a very beautiful shot and also a penalty. Oh, Leroy Sainz scored? Yes, yes, yes. That means Terry could be happy. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. And then Vinicius <laughs> came in to uh, finish the Dakar. Uh, so let's talk about the... But Harry Kane scored a penalty. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. In yeah. the 57th minute. So it's 2-2 two, two now. 2-2 two, two now. So 2-2 two, two remains 2-2. Two, two. That's two, not how we go rule. Yes. So in 2022, mm -hmm. uh, there was an uh, extraordinary uh, conference that happened in UEFA, uh, Alexa, Alexander Seferin. So... Uh, during the meeting, they wanted to scrap that we go. It had been in place even during the days of uh, that was Michel Platini. Oh, forever, that was yes. Or forever, way back forever, in 2003. Forever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, an incident happened in the 2001 uh, Champions League between Leeds. Leeds and also Bayern Munich. Bayern, uh, Bayern Munich went to the finals based on away goals, you understand. Leeds could have qualified to the Champions League. Well, but Manchester League United in 1999 yes. had two significant away goals away in the goal quarterfinal and semi final. Yeah, Juventus. 2-2 yes. two, two in Ad Ultra for 3-3 yeah. three, three in Turin yeah, yeah. went over against Juventus yeah. and went to the so, final. So uh, they have scrapped it. They said they want uh, a level playing ground. Away teams don't have uh, advantage over the home teams. So, like, if the rule was still in place, Madrid would have uh, an upper hand. I don't know why you referred to that because the, the, what we understood from the away goal was that it was to stop away teams from defending, from packing uh, the bus. I don't know And why. indicating to them that there's a price to score. Yes, so yes, you open up. Yes. That's the purpose of the away goal. I'm not sure why they fixed it. I, I, I in 1983, know. when Asante Kotoko won the African Cup, they had been 1-0 up in the game in Kumasi mm -hmm. after drawing goalless. Yeah. And the stadium was very quiet because everyone knew that if Ali scored mm -hmm. in the dying minutes, 1-1, one, one, Ali took the trophy. Yeah. And that was when people felt that our goal rule was unfair. Very but unfair. eventually, Kotoko went through 1-0. So the away goal rule is important. It, it helps the, the away team to open up yeah. and, and play the game. That's why UEFA Champions League has become the way it is. It is. So you, yeah. can see, you don't see a whole match different from an away match. The away team comes and they are playing like they are home. They have to score. Now that they scrapped it, I'm really not sure what to do. We're going to have too many penalties there. Ah, penalties and also. But they're also saying since they took it off for the past two seasons, there have been baskets of goals. 4-0, 5-3, 5-5, 4-4. You know, the matches that have been happening in the yeah, City. Yeah, yeah. So they, they, they say, okay, then this Yeah, is but that would, that, in the City game, it would have meant... Real Madrid went through? Yes. On that way, Goro. Real Madrid won the penalties? No, no, no. no. But we don't City would have gone through because on way, City, yes, City scored three away I was 2-2 two, two here. Yes, yes. yes and 3-3. Three, three. Yes. So City would have gone yes, through yes, on that yes, way, Goro. Yes. Yeah, but that's better than penalties. The lottery of penalty yeah. takes away from... Yeah. The real winner of the game, and even penalties, they wanted to bring in the golden goal rule. That rule, oh, that one we don't like rule. it. It's, it's, even though is it black satellites? One of our junior yeah, teams yeah. benefited from the yeah. from the golden rule yeah. uh, back in the day. Okay, so Champions League next week for the yeah, return. Next week, yeah, Benabao. Yeah. Benabao. Ben so um, uh, uh, Jude Bellingham must play out of himself to make oh, sure yes, Madrid yes, get a yes, victory. Yes. If so, Madrid need to win. They have and to Bayern win. need to win. Need to win. Otherwise, you go to penalties. Yes. Wow. So it's an all-level playing That's ground. a big deal. Yeah. But, uh, but the advantage will be Madrid. Oh, playing yeah, at the Benabal, yeah. 120,000 yeah. people, all in white. Yeah. That, that's, that's a spectacle to overcome. Yes. So I'm guessing that uh, good night to Bayern. But, Bayern. but Bayern will be counting on history. In 2012, mm -hmm. when they played the Champions League final in their home and lost to Chelsea, yeah. uh, they took Madrid out of the Benabal on penalties. So, oh, yes. the 2012 one. Yes, yes, yes. The, the one Chelsea won. Yes, the one, the one Mourinho just <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. cried. He was, he was just devastated that day. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Ronaldo I missed see. the penalty. Kaka missed the penalty. It was, was, was such a very sad Ah, so they are, they are counting on the luck to come yes, back. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, okay, let's see what <laughs> happens. Tomorrow's Champions League is uh, Dortmund. Dortmund and PSG. And uh, I'm, I'm and Mbappe. I'm, I'm tipping Dortmund. Oh, I think Mbappe should go through. We want to see Mbappe in the Champions League final, uh, playing against Madrid at Wembley. That's going to be super. Wow. It, mm. it will sell tickets, though. It will. It, it will. will. Mbappe tickets. against Madrid Spectacle. at Wembley is a big story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so they play tomorrow. Yes, well, tomorrow. Where first? Uh, so in uh, West Berlin Stadium. That's in Germany first. So. Oh, oh, so two German clubs are in the semi-final. Mm -hmm. Dortmund mm -hmm. and Bayern. And Bayern. And, and Leverkusen have won. Are they winning the... The, the Europa, they're also in the semi-finals. Yeah, in the semi-final. Yes. They overcame West Ham. West Ham, yeah. I see. And then they, they are going literally unbeaten. They have gone 45 games 
Uh, is this level one match and they will break the all time? Xavi Alonso has done an amazing, an amazing job. job. Wow. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Yeah. So we have Bukayo our friend Saka, here. Jeremy uh, Doku. Jeremy Doku. And also our friend and, Salah. Uh, uh, Mohamed. Let's start with Salah. What yes, was that yes, about? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, the game against Everton, mm -hmm. that was the previous game on Wednesday, mm -hmm. uh, he started the match and then they lost 2 0. And the fans were coming for. Um, his profligacy and also he misses some chances together with Nunez and then the club listened to the fans and he benched them so the fans started he all him his and uh, Nunez. Darwin Nunez yes. okay so the match started against in West this Ham, West Ham, West Ham game. game and then they were leading 2-1 everything was nice and then West Ham equalized just three minutes before they came on in the first minute so they were just tripping off Darwin Nunez and also uh, Mohamed Salah and then club just came to Mohamed Salah whispered something to him and it looks like your man didn't like what he said it still has not been known whatever he, s he told Salah. But Salah, when asked, said, when he speaks, there'll be fire. When he speaks, well, He must have be fire. said to Salah that we need to win the game. Yeah. So you have to be up and doing. And I'm sure that will find I, I feel Salah was hurt that why didn't he start this match? Why did he listen to the fans? Why did he could have, you know, uh, impacted this game so much? Because Liverpool needed a point. And now that he's Yeah, but that's not his decision. It's a decision of the coach. Right. Whilst the coach may be wrong, mm -hmm. the protocol is that a player doesn't decide that he's going to play. Yeah. It's a coach that decides. Yeah. So, so let's, let's, let's look at the pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You can see he was, Klopp went back and was still talking and then even Darwin Nunes was even holding Calming him, him down. He still wanted to talk. I really don't know. I think his race is one. He knows the coach it will not be there next season. So uh, it looks like the, the players have just cut, uh, Yeah, but, but yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool have, uh, yeah. have let themselves down. Yeah, say, if, if I, I speak, speak today... Be what is he going to say that will be fair? I, I, I even don't know. It's, it's, a, it's a sad point for very, great, very sad. great player Mohamed Salah. Yes, and uh, also from Ali McCoy, uh, that's the former Rangers uh, legend. He says, it looks to me that he might be moving. That's Salah. Uh, yeah, he should and be. And I feel his time but, is But, his but time he's, he's old, about 32. Yeah, they should cash out 100 million from the Saudi. Nobody's going to buy Saudi uh, Salah for 100 million. Saudi, oh, well, Saudi me, yeah, yeah, they Saudi me. They, they would. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the. Uh, yes, so these are their results in April. This mess, the, it started with this United match, and that was it for them. And that was it. 2 2. Uh, that was it for them. So out. Yeah, out. Yeah, out. Literally. Mm. So let's go to our friend here, Bukayo Saka. Bukayo Saka. Yeah. I thought, I, I, I watched the Tottenham game. I feel as now we're lucky. Yes. If you look at the trend of play, the own goal for the, the first goal, goal, the VAR. The VAR. Yeah. If the VAR goal had been allowed, allowed Tottenham yeah. would have beaten them. It would have beaten them. Simply. Yeah, it looked like I don't. It doesn't. Arsenal doesn't seem to me like a championship team. It doesn't seem. I mean, it would be unfair if they win the title. It's controversial for me to say that. But if you wow. look at what happened on Sunday, wow. it would be very unfair if they win the title. Title winning teams don't play like that. Yeah. They went to City, City yeah. and they went. They packed the bus. You yeah. don't win a title. Title winning team. You're a solid team. You're playing. They went to Tottenham and they were lucky. They they're were not lucky. in control of the they're game. They were just lucky. Yeah. And even at the end, after scoring three goals, leading by three goals to nil, yeah. they were still behind on the play. That's not a team very, that wins very, the very. league. No way. Yeah, I'm so not sure they Let's look at Saka's record. It has been progression mm -hmm. after progression. His mm -hmm. first season, one goal. He was a right back then, so we should pardon Oh, him. yeah. Was so, it left or right? He was right. Okay. So he moved to the right wing. That was 2021. Five mm -hmm. goals. 11 goals, 14 and 15. He's done well. Yes. Uh, he, he maybe really he should be going to Real Madrid. Maybe. maybe. <laughs> and then yeah, he also said, we learned our lessons last year. We are ready for the last three games. Yeah, but that, this is the kind of comments that I don't understand. You are not, it's not in your hands. Yes. You are waiting for somebody to slip. It, you see, you say this when it's in your hands. Mm -hmm. What last season it was in their hands and they bottled they it. Bottled it yeah. Now you are waiting for City to bottle it. And I'm not sure whether no, that's no, going to no, happen. No, no. Anyway. Ah, so yeah, this is the running. Yeah. So 80 points. Uh, with 35 matches played, 79 points with 34 matches. Yeah, one game. So, yeah, one game. And then Liverpool. But let's see what is left and see what, what do you have. Yes, what's uh, left? So, uh, yeah, so over here, let me go back. Let's do what's left before we go to the bottle. Or how yes, do you want so, to do it? So, uh, the penultimate game, let's talk about the penultimate game. 12 May. 12 May. Yeah. That would be a big day. So, Arsenal will be playing quite earlier at 1 o'clock against, uh, against my United. So, if I'm a Teta, the only thing I'll show to the players is this. What's so, this? This is exactly 11 years ago that the Arsenal players did a guard of honor for, oh, for Man United, who had won the Van title Persie, yes. with Van Persie at the Emirates. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a big betrayal. So he should just show them this, and they what go, will this do to them? It will ginger them. They will want United. They hope by the time they face United, City would have slipped up, and United would rather do the guard of honor. It, it has been yeah, but City. Who are City playing before that game? Yeah, so City will go. They to, Wolves, I think. Yeah, Wolves. They will play they Wolves play at home. It's it, yeah, yes. yeah, they'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, are hoping, they are hoping. They are hoping. I mean, this, if, if I watch the, um, the Nottingham Forest game yeah. that City played, Nottingham Forest as a position was more difficult mm -hmm. for City than Tottenham, Tottenham became yeah. for Arsenal. Yeah. 
a city were able to manage it. Sure. I'm not sure at this stage. I mean, and, and somebody was saying that there are certain coaches and certain teams that don't bottle no, these no, no, things no, no, up. No, no. At this stage, with how many games to go? Oh, just uh, four games for City and also three games for... Four for games City. to go for City. Yes. They are two yeah. points ahead. Yeah. And they are not... You see, if City were going to Anfield, that's tricky. Yeah. If they're coming to Old Trafford, Old Trafford that's, that's tricky. tricky. Or they were going to the Emirates. That would be tricky. But they don't have any of these. Mm. They are playing... They are done. Look at what they did to Brighton. Oh, they are done. Yeah, they just finished they them done. off. I'm yeah. not sure. So, uh, Arsenal should not be worried. They can beat Manchester United and still lose uh -huh. the so title. So, these are the, the shadows for Arsenal. So, they will play so, at home to... They play at home to Bournemouth. I think they'll yes. be them. Uh, they go yeah. away to Old Trafford. That's a problem. And the last game. Everton. Yes. That's not Everton simple. Is also fighting for relegations. So. But by then, Everton should be out of relegation. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. But they can just want to... They, will, they just want to seal it. Yeah. And Everton is a kind of boogie club for Arsenal. Arsenal. They, they yes, sort of yes, worry yes, them. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, and City have City. what? Uh, Wolves, Fulham away. They have five games? No, this is out. They, they have Tackle there. Okay, so they have Everton. Wolves yeah. at home. For, uh, then they go to what's this? Craven, uh, Craven Cottage for home. Yeah. Craven Fulham. Cottage as Fulham, yeah, that's tricky. Yeah, yeah. But I think the City can make it. And then they have Spurs, Tottenham yeah. on the last but one. And then they have West Ham West at home. Yeah. Nah, I'm sure no, City they will get it. They yeah. they player them. quality, player for yeah. player, they are there. Coach, they are there. Psychology, they are there. They are the defending yeah. champions. Yeah. I don't know whether it is too early for us to call it for City. Maybe we have to uh, wait for this weekend. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. And then, uh, uh, this is Arsenal's record in 2024. Away matches, uh, they have just drawn only one. And then, so, I feel they have to win the league. If they don't win the league this year, that's it for them. They won't win it again. It will look. It is looking like that. Yes. Uh, well, I'm not that they won't win again, but they won't win uh, it next yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. They cannot be second yes. three times. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. And uh, so the fastest manager to get to 700 points. That's Pep Guardiola. Uh, he's outstanding. 700 points in Premier League. Yes, fastest in 221. Uh, he has won 221 uh, games and also drawn 41, lost 38. So if you if you do the league table for the 700 games, he tops. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then Jose Mourinho is next. Jobin Club, yeah. Alex Vegas, Alex and Asimunga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. That's interesting. Very, very. And then, yes, your man is saying, if we draw a game, we are not going to win the Premier League. That's mind games. That's mind, mind yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mind yeah, he's games. very solid on that. He knows that he cannot draw oh, any yes. game. He's going to win. Let's touch on uh, the teams that can bottle the league. Yeah. Uh, he was a specialist in uh, winning. In delivering the title. title with nine games to oh, go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes. And sometimes Alex Ferguson won almost every title with five, four games oh, to yeah, spare. Yeah. His, almost his every lowest, title. His lowest uh, position in the league was third. His lowest. Oh, I see. It was first, second, first, second, first, second. But when he won it, mm -hmm. the times that he won it, he always won it way ahead. Oh, yeah. He didn't win it on the last least. day, last I think, one day. I think the only time he bottled the league was the 2012, the City one. Ah, at, yeah, in yeah. January, we were eight points clear. No, well, th that one, the game, the league ended the same point. City yeah, won on goal aggregate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of speculation was about how that occurred. Okay, Mark yeah. Hughes was in there. A, a few yeah. things we cannot say. And then he <laughs> vowed that it will never happen again. Yeah. And, I and the next season, he won for us. Yeah. And our best friend here, yeah, Mourinho. Yeah, also Mourinho doesn't bottle yes. it up. He, he also was winning win. with games to spare. Oh, yeah. Mourinho yeah. was winning with games to spare. Yeah. He won so, in the first two seasons with games to spare. Yeah. And even a record he set in 2004, 2005, his first season, 15 goals conceded. That is a record. Only? Added. Only. The Chelsea team. The, it was serious. But that was a real solid team. Very solid team. The Michael Lassian William team. Gallas, uh, yes, Michael yes, yes. all those players. And then the German Czech. captain, Michel Balak, was Michel in Balak, the Didier yes. Oh my God. Frank Lampard. Jeremy Njitab. Oh, that was it. Ashley Cole was in the Ashley team. Ashley Cole was, yeah. And yeah, Peter yeah, Cech. Yeah, that yeah. was a that really was a good team. team. Yeah, very, very, very solid, solid team. team. So, oh, so Kamba so was, was in Arsenal. He's in Arsenal. Yeah, he was yeah. in Arsenal. So yeah, a very yeah. very solid team. Very and also a young Iron Robin. He was he was. Oh, Iron Robin played for Chelsea. Yeah, I can't yeah, even remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he did. Yeah, <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah. So ah uh, uh, yes, Iron Robin was there before Mourinho came. He was part of uh, the other coaches' yeah, club yeah, yeah. team. The team that beat Barcelona. Ranieri. Yeah, Ranieri. Yeah, Claudio Ranieri's team. Yeah. The team that beat Barcelona four three yeah, or three two something like that. John Terry scoring the winner. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I did a graph and then uh, most times at the top of the Premier League without winning. Mm -hmm. And then it looks like Arsenal tops everything. Arsenal 2022, 20, 93, 93%. So they bottled it in April with five games to go. Arsenal 2002, 2003, they bottled it 71 games, 71%. So mm -hmm. they bottled it in, in March to United with only eight games to go. They won only two matches in that stretch. Yeah. And United won six matches and, and took the title from the title when they were leading. Them. Yes, and also Arsenal again. In 2007-2008, started the league very, very well and lost it in March again when Eduardo, their best player, got injured yeah, in the yeah. match at Birmingham. And also Liverpool, 2018-2019, they bottled it also in March. So Arsenal City. is a chief And then Arsenal again, 13-2020. <laughs> City have never bottled it. No, no, no. Yes, okay. this was 2008 at the bio. <laughs> uh, oh, this is Fabregas. Yes, Cesc Fabregas. Uh, okay. yeah, they bottled it and uh, 
this was also 2003, 2004. Maria. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Maria and Jera, yeah. So, 2020. And this is the Jesus people. Yes, yes, yes. So, Arsenal, you remember, 29 matches, they were leading by eight points. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then they bought yeah. it. So, Arsenal, hmm, they had to change. And even this was uh, the season before, mm -hmm. they were fighting for top four with Tottenham. And they were still leading. And the Tottenham bypassed them. So, Arsenal, they had to shake off this voodoo mm -hmm. with them of bottling. You understand? And also, this was, they also bottled it in 99. United yeah. won on the last day. So, yeah. Uh huh. Close City, 2000, 2021, 2022, they won with only one point against Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah. Remember, remember that, that yeah. 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 And also, the same thing with 2018, 2019. City, they won 11 matches in a row. They're not going to lose. Once they get there. Once they get I'm there. I'm not sure. But if they were going away to, say, Liverpool, mm -hmm. away to Arsenal, or away to Manchester United, that one will be problematic. Yes. Arsenal play Manchester United on 12th, and they believe they can win that game. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. very tight for them. I mean, yeah. it depends on how the game starts. But if United score first, that's going to be serious. Yeah. Or if Arsenal scores score, and United equalizes, equalizes at yeah. home, that's also going to be crazy. They need to find a way to deal with Ganacho. Because if you go back to the mm -hmm. opening, opening game, game yeah. in uh, uh, Emirates, Ganacho scored it, was the, it was the VR the that VR, saved yeah, Arsenal. Yeah. Otherwise, United were going away with a 2-1 win. Yeah. So at um, 90, 90, 89, 89, it was 2-1. Yeah. Then the VR ruled it away. And then Arsenal got two yeah. quick goals. One from great goal from Jesus. Yes, that yes, day. Yeah. Very, very good. So uh, the ball. on our friend Saka, all his you know, results would go bare. He can maybe you can win PFA player, you wrong player of the year. But ah, is he still a young player? Uh, but are, he's won that already. He, has won, he won the last season. Yeah, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want he, to win it again. Ah, so the reason why I bought him uh, that was Thierry Henry was in 2002-2003. Thierry had... 24 goals and 20 assists. That's still a record in the Premier League. Whew. 20, 20 assists. assists, 24 goals. Ha! And it was on record to win the Ballon d'Or. So he, the, 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 the team bottled the Premier League. And they gave it to you, Pavel Nevde. You remember this guy? No. Juventus. The play for you, man? Yes, number 10. Okay, you is not a team that I yeah, particularly yeah, watch. Yeah. He, he, yeah, yeah. he, he scored only 10 goals and 9 assists. And that was it. They gave it to me because he won the league. Yeah. He went to the Champions League final. So that was him. Uh, so yeah, that was... It, today is, uh, I think, 17 years that Chelsea won the very first Premier League. Premier League yeah. And Jose Mourinho threw his uh, winner's medal into uh, the Yo, fans. And yeah. still hasn't seen it. Oh, no, no, no. no. He didn't want it. Oh, he just threw it. You know, for, 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 for Shea Gay reasons, you know this one. <laughs> I, I like him very, very much. Okay, I have to leave it here. Yes. I have to leave it here. And then uh, we will continue uh, with the rest of the uh, stories. Now, we have to deal with the, the social media conversation that's going on uh, right now. There was a, a show. Okay. I bring the uh -huh. Here we are. Hey. So, this is Akosu Amenu, and this is uh, Dr. Grace Ayinsu. Akosu Amenu is the MPP parliamentary candidate for Adenta. And Dr. Grace Ayinsu is the uh, NDC parliamentary candidate for Esika Keten. She's a second-time parliamentary candidate. She, uh, she was parliamentary candidate before in 2020. In the election that she did very well. That was NDC's best show in Esikado Keten against Joe Gatte. Uh, many people believe that Joe Gatte was uh, on the downhill as a member of parliament, and that's the reason why Grace Ayinsu came up so strongly, because in the presidential count, uh, President Akufado was significantly leading John Dramani Mahama. Now, the parliamentary candidate for Esikado is uh, Charles Bissu of the MPP, and he promises everyone that he's going to have a wide gap over uh, Grace Ayinsu. But that's not the conversation today. Today's conversation for these two uh, uh, women is about the 24-hour economy. So I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you the details um, of, of, of what happened. So the two of them had a radio program. And um, they spoke to each other about 24-hour economy. I'll show you what happened on the radio program. And then after the radio program, Grace Ayansu took to her Facebook page and wrote certain things about Akusha Mino, uh, which we'll talk about as well. And then, still on the 24-hour economy, my friend Sami Okujeto Ablakwa was attempting an explanation on TV3's program, and uh, he also spoke about it. So let me not uh, make past opinions until after. Yes, we always give you an opinion, but after, I just wanted to see it so you can form your own opinion. And then when we give our opinion, you can determine whether our opinion is correct, wrong, or it could have been better. Here's a video of what happened in Omar Hineko Abrasante studio uh, here in Accra. Have a look. In eight solid years, Bakwa Wabeka. In Kofod na edu machin to min chichim. And even if you believe, say, you've benefited from um, um, 24 eco economy in a developed country. Now yeah, yeah developing now yeah, cause yeah, we are doing the basic building blocks. No? Basic building blocks, no? I went to me and buy new. 
basic salary went to India. And when it comes to twenty-four hour economy, my I think say just say beyond one casa be chemo ni ati ase because as far as I'm concerned. I don't understand it. I'm not convinced by it. Bro, for I bro for me or a saying be another idiomatic expression. Also the eyes cannot see what the brain does not know. I don't know you are dreaming when you pong one Mamma is delicate. The brain does not know, so how is the eyes going to see it? And I'm saying, so she the won't whole understand party. it no matter how you explain to her. Oh, my prof, we have a bad It's a sentence. I'm not going to correct it. There be prof. The eyes cannot see what the brain does not know. With the prof, with the. I think I've just been insulted. I mean, she has no better. But it's that's the same. That's the same. Obisa, Obisa, in Cheche Mupe. This is the posture. The 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 assembly teacher make kind of say, Obia nursing and teachers allowance went to meet you. Say who um abide them at the time ah, or much we muna unya justification. No, no, they na unya oba oba abadai. The 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 lack or the inability to explain <laughs> what the 24 hour economy is because basically you are being told that say a 24 hour economy to experience it no way to quiet down i will be appreciating it more people don't need to travel oh and who tv so people people experience life through even watching the arts videos tv shows and everything okay, so if they have a, a, they have enough Common sense into draw into don't, don't insult the intelligence of Ghanaians by sitting here saying, Sir, who knew Yan San? It was it wasn't even the same. The same, baby, you don't speak of me, who knew baby Yama because you are not the initial that so you can't speak where I'm gone. But it's important that we are young, who are young, who are crying, and they're gonna talk aside because behind the console, and you're cozy now in a castle, a gun of one on your mocassa. So, Cassa, oh, 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 it is in direct response that people who even my son of Ukabi will say, Who so who vote? But Kasama Wakano, Prof, Prof, I guarantee you, it will turn people's minds away. Yes, yeah, that's what children might say. You need my vote. You Oh, oh, my my <laughs> 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 I insist that, especially in these times, uh, measured in, 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 in what we say. So you saw that uh, that conversation in the studio. The Grace Ayensu here was asked to explain 24 hour economy. Or, or no, actually, uh, Kozi Min was making the point that the NDC has been opposition for eight years. They have not made any policy. This is the first thing they are talking about that looks like policy. For them not to be able to explain, it suggests that they have not... They have, I mean, you've been, you've been working at it for eight years. You've been running campaign for four years at least, looking to the next election. You have designed a policy, one district, one factory, one village, one dam. One this. Come and explain what 24-hour economy is. It's always a struggle. Maybe they should hire me. I can explain it for them. Well, maybe I can't do 24. I can do 12-hour economy. I can I, I explain why we should have a 12-hour economy at the minimum. But they can't explain. So here, uh, uh, Dr. Ayesu says that the mind cannot see, uh, the eyes cannot see what the mind cannot comprehend. It means that she's a policymaker, she's a politician making policy for us. We should go and grow our mind so that we can understand this. She's not interested in breaking it down for you to understand. If your mind is uh, a rubbish mind, you can't understand. So if you don't understand 24 hour economy, they won't, she won't explain. She will just tell you that. Okay, 24 hour economy, raise my hand, those who don't understand me, I raise my hand, I don't understand. Okay, you don't understand means that your brain is not working. You haven't been to a brochure before, that's why you don't understand. Is that the explanation she's given? Nothing to do with NDC or MPP. It's an insult to Ghanaians, isn't it? Politicians cannot behave like that. They ought to be responsible. Grace, I also ought to be responsible as a politician. Explain to us, listen, Cozy, listen to me. 24 hour economy means this. Let's take an example. So you are selling uh, plantain. 24 economy will give you this, that, that. So you're a journalist. 24 economy will give you this, that, that. You're a doctor like her. 24 economy will give you this, that, that. And then when you ask them to explain, they say, you don't have brain, so you don't understand. You are pretending you don't understand. But they have not put any explanatory narrative for you to engage with. There's no explanatory narrative. Where is the explanatory narrative that this is the explanatory narrative for the 24-hour economy? This is what Tony Edu used to talk about the NDC, that they are failing on the policy. They are policy thinkers. Maybe they should hire money to put it together for them. Frankly, we'll be able to do that. But this kind of thing, that's, we want an election where we are debating policy. So they should deal with it. 24 economy is a headline, it's a title. 
What does it entail? Just tell us. Grace Science says that you have to have brain to understand. If you don't have brain, you don't get it. That the mind cannot something, something. Anyway, my friend Samuel Kujeto perhaps did a better job on TV3 to explain 24-hour economy. Have a listen to him. No one would argue that um, it's ill-defined and it's difficult to convince us that that, that is the wholesome mm-hmm. solution to the problems of our country right now. What's ill-defined about it? I mean, the 24-hour economy is a 24-hour economy. We want to move. Well, we are we, not learning more about how to, to operationally. What we've got we from to, the NDC we, you, is, you, you, you clearly is, have not been listening to is, us and you've not been... You want me to send you there. We have a whole I, blueprint. I have seen the packet. Yes, yes. But, but, but it's, only, it's only a simplified version of what will actually be applied. Um, we are mm-hmm. yet to understand how this will be operationalized so that the Ghanaian people can reap from it. The NDC is taking too long in giving us that, but it's been propagating 24-hour economy. Mm-hmm. A buzz, which some will say is, is, you know, trailing off. Oh, yeah, certainly. It's caught on. And uh, the TUC has described this as a game changer. That that's what this country has been waiting for. It's an idea whose time has come. Look, we have put out the blueprint. Uh, we have said that uh, the, the flag bearer is just teasing out portions of our manifesto. Uh, very soon, in a few months, we are going to launch the manifesto. And that's where, if you want the full, full program to go into the details, the bolts and nuts, you, you're going to have it. But there's nothing mysterious. This is not rocket science. We are not saying we are going to space. I mean, we're just talking about a 24 economy which has worked in other jurisdictions and can work here. Is that, is that all? It's it's just, a, it's so it's a, just it's a 24 hour a, economy a, for the a, NDC it's going a, it's into a, it's the It's a very simple concept. Election. I earlier talked about how we are going to deal with corruption. The, president, the flag bearer has said that he will have a no-nonsense approach. He has said that he will start from home. Charity begins at home, you know, and that even his own appointees will not be spared. He's talked about constitutional reforms, and under constitutional reforms, he's talked about a whole swath of governance, you know, um, uh, 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 governance reforms, which include, you know, cancelling the S. Gratia, for example, uh, reducing the number of ministers. He has said that he can work with no more than 60 ministers. Mm-hmm. Where we are now, 87 and the likes. You know, and it's going to be more because we thought that there's been a reshuffle. We thought they would take advantage of this reshuffle to reduce the number of ministers. But that's not what has happened. People are being removed from sector ministers. They are being sent to the presidency. They are still going to be drawing from public funds. Mm-hmm. And then uh, at the Lands Ministry, I'm told the deputy minister who was removed has just been appointed a special advisor to the uh, minister. So virtually nobody is going home. Uh, everybody is being asked to hang on to continue to draw you know, scarce uh, 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 taxpayer funds. So we are saying that we are not going to have this obese, so, I mean, obese, so obese on, on government. On the bread and butter issues is the 24-hour economy. The 24-hour economy, uh, the 24-hour economy we are talking about, uh, uh, we are talking about infrastructure. He's, he's, he said that, look, we must continue with our program to have uh, every regional capital having an airport. What? Um, he's, 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 he's talked about the need to have in agriculture, to have uh, farm banks, so I, I to mean, have I keep, I keep cooperatives. So it's, I, we, we, we have not put out our comprehensive I, I totally understand. So you see, when you ask them 24-hour economy, <laughs> let me have Grace Science's photograph first. I'll come to this. When you have, uh, when you ask them to inspire economy, that's a black white you saw. He's, he's, uh, he's an intelligent man. And look at, look at what he was saying. He's, he ended with ministerial reshuffle and how many ministers does the president have. Then he said they're going to have airports in every uh, regional capital. Yes, that's a good thing. How does the airport in every regional capital connect to the 24 hour economy? How do I, journalist, news reporter, how do I benefit from 24 hour economy? How does a teacher, benefit from 24 hours. How does a trader benefit from 24 hour economy? How does a young worker at the bank benefit from 24 hour economy? What is the impact that 24 hour economy is going to have? You can ask that question in 2016. You say one district, one factory. What is the impact that one district, one factory is going to have? You're going to have a district, a factory in a district to cre- create employment for people. You're going to do this, that, 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 that. So how many of the factories have been done? Even if it's one, let's go to that one factory and see whether it has had that impact. Did Ghanaians understand when they said one district, one factory? Was it explained to them? Yes, it was explained to them and they understood it. But when you ask them 24-hour economy, it is as if they borrowed it. As if they heard me talking about it and they picked it. I'm, I'm sorry to say. It's like they heard me talking about it, so they picked it. What is... All the, all the professors in NDC, Professor, this is one of them. All the professors in NDC, Professor Jinnan Nopokwajima, Professor... Uh, uh, 
Grace Ayensu, uh, Professor Joshua Labi, Professor, they can't define 24 hour economy. The host of the program was saying that it is ill defined. And Ablaqua said it is in a manifesto. It is coming. The manifesto is coming at some point. It's coming. When they said one, this is one factory, did they say wait for manifesto? That's the point. And then, young woman, Akosha Menu, talks about it. She says that we are not sensible. We have not lived abroad before, so we don't know. We should go abroad. We should, when you go abroad, you know. We should uh, buy a ticket and do passports and go abroad before we can understand the policy that the government, the people who want to come to government are showing us. The policy that the people who want to come to government, the policy that they are articulating. We should do passport, get visa, buy tickets, and go to Abuchi. That's what Grace Ayesu is saying. We should go to Abuchi before we go and understand the policy, 24 hour economy. They, they are looking for our votes. They are not looking for Abuchi people's votes. Our votes. They want us to vote for them. And they say they will do 24 hour economy. Okay, what does it mean? Oh, you don't have common sense, so you don't understand. Oh, go abroad and, oh, manifesto is coming. 24 hour economy means that we'll use 60 ministers. We'll use 80 like Akufuado. We'll use 200 like Kufo. We'll use a, a, a 60. We'll have airports. What, what does it mean? It is truly ill defined. But let's give them, let's give them the, the time. They say that they will show us soon. All right. So after the conversation in the studio, Grace Ayensu goes on her Facebook page. Professor Doctor, I'm not, I'm not sure why she calls herself that, but Professor Doctor Grace Ayensu Dankwa uh, with somebody called Alma. This is what he writes. When your only talent in life is marrying McMenu's son, you will continue to arrogantly struggle to remain relevant. This is what Grace Ayensu wrote about Kozimenu. You know, Kozimenu is married to McMenu's son. Yes, we know that. But this is what, he, this is what she wrote. I mean, Grace Ayensu is a very nice woman. Very intelligent woman. I mean, even her, this behavior is not of Takradi people. You know, Takradi people are very well raised. And she, especially, coming from where she comes from, is particularly well raised. A Japan where are you? Your sister. She's gone. Oh, she's gone. Look at what. I mean, a very decent woman. Politics can destroy people in Ghana like that. I'm, I'm so sorry. This, this is somebody that, I mean, you would easily admire when you see her. She's so sensible. She talks so well. She's a very decent woman. And she is a woman. And look at what she's writing about another woman, a younger woman that she should be mentoring. Even her poster in the studio, I didn't like it, but that's okay. But look at what she put out. When your only talent in life is marrying McMenu's son, you will continue arrogant. How can a politician of Grace Ayoso's standard, nice, decent woman like that, look at what she's writing? Because you have to win power. Because, because you have to win power. She's just thrown away all the ethics. Thrown away all the... I mean, Grace Ayesu is a very decent woman. From all angles. From her training, her background, her relationship with people. She's a very nice woman. But look at what politics has done to her. She's now writing this very crass thing on social media. I feel ashamed. Oh, what is this? A Japan Mesa, I'm talking to you. A Japan Mesa is Kadu MP. A Wahin Pacho, best of Grace, I am Sunuma, and Nancy Moy is in one. Yeah, yeah, Grace, I am Sushara Bakocho. Ossi, Mac, Cozy has married Mac Minusan. A Japan Mesa, where are you talking about people? It's the Kadu people. Come, come, come. Jogate and your, your family, please. Your sister, Grace, I am Sushi, is going. Oh, she's gone. Election 2024 is taking her away. Look at this. Look at what Grace, I am wrote. I, I'll tell you my experience with Grace. I, I, don't, even, I don't know her. I saw her 60, 2016 or 2015 at an airport shell. And she spoke to me whether I'm the person doing good evening in Ghana, blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, but who are you? I didn't, she wasn't a politician to me then. She said she's a doctor at the airport hospital. She's come from America, blah, blah, blah. So we spoke nicely. Then I told people that ah, I met a doctor called Grace. They said, hey, Grace, I so 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 and so's person. And the person they mentioned is, is my godfather. I, I know him. I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, that is a person. I said, what did you tell her? I said, oh, I didn't tell her anything. I just admired her. And, uh, then sometime I was traveling to London. She happened to be on the flight. We arrived in Heathrow. She was with her daughter who was in medical school. So she introduced her daughter to me that this is her daughter. She's also studying to become a doctor. Very, very decent woman. Then I heard that she was campaigning in Chicago. In fact, I was in this studio. In, on the night of election 2020, when Alex Segbefia, who was my guest, got a phone call. And he put the phone call, the phone down, and said, Hey, Masa, your man has been beaten. Oh. I said, Which man? He said, Joe Gatti. I said, The Cicado? He said, Yeah. I said, NDC has won a Cicado. He said, Tali, we won it. I quickly called Joe Gatti. I think if I get the tape of the program, I'll bring it for you to see. I called Joe Gatti. I said, What's happening? 
He said, we are still counting. I said, but I'm hearing Grace Ayesu is winning. He said, oh, no, 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 she can't win. We are leading her. I think we will we'll cross the line. Now, when Jogatik said he'll cross the line, I knew that Grace Ayesu had done well. Because in Chicago is not a place where MPP crosses the line. They win. When the final results came, I looked at it. I said, oh, wow. Grace Ayesu went to court. I think she's still in court uh, looking for a declaration that Jogate did not win the election. So this is Grace Ayesu. Decent woman. How does politics destroy such a person? Totally destroyed her. You go on a radio program, you cannot explain a policy that you are campaigning, elect, uh, you are campaigning to be voted into office on a policy that you cannot explain. A, B, you do not want to explain. C, you insult the people who don't understand it. I mean, why do you do that? This is unfair to Ghanaians. We don't want to have whether MPP or NDC politician who is doing that. If you have a policy, come and explain it. We watch CNN every day. We see the Republicans and the Democrats shrug it out, but they explain their policy. If you don't understand it, if you don't want to, to ask to vote for you on the policy, don't bring it up. Once you bring it up in an election year, we are going to be interrogating you about it. So what is this, this thing that, you know? Anyway, let's, let's read the post again. I would, uh, Cozy, sorry, eh? sorry, we'll deal, we'll deal with it. Where is the post again? Let me read it finally and then I'll, I'll leave it here. My producer says it's okay, I should stop. We have too many, too many things to talk about. So, never again, Grace Ayinsu, never ever again. This thing is so below you, it's so terrible, it's so low, it's so crass. No NDC woman will be proud of it. Whether it's Christina Mwaku Noama, whether it's Emma Mitchell, whether it's uh, Mrs. Anakunidu Ajiman Rawlings, any of this scene, even Amma Benyuado, will not be proud of something like this. Grace Ayinsu, you are lowering the standards of your own NDC. The NDC standards that we are aware of, this is too low. Very, very low. Never again. Go and delete your post. Don't write again. Next time you appear on TV, please do better. Okay? This, when your only talent is this, it is wrong. Kozimenu uh, is a hard-working woman, working to make sure that she can win the NDC MPP seat for Adenta. Even if she doesn't win, Cozy has done excellent. Nobody gave her a dog's chance to win the primary. She's won the primaries comfortably, and now she's heading to victory, I believe, and I hope that she will win. Here is Cozy's montage. Never again, Grace Ayinsu. Let's see what people are saying about it. Anziba is our first text reader. We have a first, our first message from Hajia Halima saying, Paul, Dr. Grace is a, a disgrace to the title she attaches to her name. She, de she denigrated Akosia on her Facebook page about whom she is married to when she is still married, unlike Dr. Grace, who couldn't manage her marriage and kicked out by Mr. Dankwa due to her insatiable 
greed and betrayal after he saw her through her education in the USA, even though she is still all over the place claiming to be a gender activist. And as Clinton is asking if it's possible for you to play the video again, the video of the interview, Jocelyn Coleman is saying, if you are so if you're a so-called professor and you can't explain yourself on the 24-hour economy, that, should, that doesn't mean that you should be rude to your opponent. Nanayao says, so having international airports in all regional capitals in the 24-hour economy, right? Is the 24-hour economy, right? Oh, good evening, Ghana. We have Efo Nyano saying, 24-hour economy is having airports in every region. Nana Kwesi is saying, how is 24-hour economy your flagship policy to win an election? Something that doesn't wholly lie in your power to implement. Providing a conducive working environment for private businesses to thrive will be a better policy. Lastly, we have Messi Adai saying, I'm very disappointed in the so-called professor who can't even expantiate her own point. Creating lies is indeed difficult. Over to you, Sarah. Okay, so coming from Jeffrey Botchway, he says, Head of Thy Church Triumphant by Charles Wesley. That is the hymn. And Kwame Chima Afo Ajman is saying that it's MHB Methodist Hymn Book 411 and not Catholic Hymn. Coming from Kwame Opon, he says, Paul, I totally disagree with your analysis on Arsenal. Every game has its strategy and Arsenal are playing depending on the opposition they are meeting. Coming from Benjamin, he says... Oh, let me interrupt that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble with all my Arsenal bosses. Prophet Gideon Danso has written to me, he said I should be very careful. No, prophet is just for the prophets so when they say stop, you have to stop. So please, Prophet Gideon Danso has written to me, empowerment, he says uh, stop the Arsenal issues. So I, I've stopped. I didn't say anything about Arsenal. Arsenal will win the league. Arsenal will win the league. I, I don't want any trouble with my bosses. My friend at Peace FM, Nana Kujua Santi, also texted me that, Paul, I will not publish your story anymore on Peace FM online. You said Arsenal will win. I beg, Arsenal will win. Please don't tell Samata Mesa that I said Arsenal will win. Don't tell Gabriel Chidako. And don't tell Sam George. I beg. Omani Buama, Arsenal will win. No problem. Please go. Okay, from Benjamin Jeff. He says, Everton is safe from relegation. And coming from Prince Scott, he says, the Alex had a rough patch in his early days in charge. Check it well. Coming from Ejedu, his prediction, he says, Liverpool still to win the league on the following. Arsenal to win one and lose two. City to win one, lose two and draw one. Liverpool to win three. Like it or not, this is how the remaining matches are going to play out. Coming from Ifwa Yoboa, she says, Dear NDC members, whether you like it or not, you will still explain the 24-hour economy to us, so get ready, pa. Yo a champion of fair says, this 24-hour thing is just a farce. The NDC simply don't understand it themselves. Mami, what do you have for us? All right, um, if I Yeboa seems to be surprised, she's asking a whole professor speaking like this. And coming from Magdalene Chapman, she says, I think the 24-hour economy means all problems will disappear in 24 hours when the NDC comes to power. And Kobe says, the NDC's inability to explain their own 24-hour economy is like a man carrying a corpse for burial but doesn't know where the cemetery is located. And also from Ishraba, he says, Good evening, Paul. If candidates Mahama and Chairman Isiedun Kitia can't explain the so-called 24-hour economy, how much more they are communicators. And lastly, from Alhaj Yusif, he says, Paul, until we begin to decode education, especially those with rich academic credentials, they'll continue to disgrace themselves in public. Um, the confidence with which she attacked Akusia with her marriage is clearly an attack on our family values. Thank you. Over to... Albert says, uh, if a whole baby with sharp teeth or Kujetu Ablakwa could not explain 24-hour economy, how much more a professor who, oh, who bought her professorship that's why she also can't explain it. Uh, please forgive them. Uh, Albert, you can't allege that someone bought their degree. Anyway, uh, Ahmed says the large percentage of Ghanaians live in rural agrarian Ghana and how can 24-hour impact every corner 
as did health insurance, free SHS, Metro Mass, planting for food and jobs. By 6 p.m., this large populace is ready to sleep or asleep. So, ADC, please, how can you carry all these on board the 24-hour economy? Kofi Osibrobi says, here in Spain, production is based on demand and supply, making the so-called 24-hour economy uh, demand-driven and not compulsory. Also, Jude from Domi says, why should Grace Ayensu explain a policy to NPP supporters? The NDC supporters understand the policy. Okay, Fred from Takari also says, some of us love people who have achieved academic laurels, but this woman has disappointed us big time. This is what politics can do to find brains. Uh, as Siedu Nketiah, Kujoto, Yamin have all struggled to explain this policy. Asemo, uh, Abdul Latif says, Dr. Grace, I used to shouldn't allow her early exploits deceive her into becoming arrogant and bitter. There is more ahead than what your mind can comprehend. Uh, the penultimate message is Paul from Ogbanzo in Medina. He says, Paul, stop referring to her as a decent woman. You know the true character a person of a person when that person is put under pressure. The doctor just exhibited her true nature, which is why she's in NDC. Yeah. And lastly, John Kwashi from Adenta Housing says, uh, Good evening, Paul. Why are you worrying yourself? Have you forgotten that NDC members always insult? Hey, I don't know about that. Paul, anyway, back to you. I mean, I still feel very disappointed about uh, Grace Ayensu's response. It's, it's so bad. It's so bad. I mean, when she came into politics, it was a very refreshing that we're going to have another Emma Mitchell. You know, for us as, as, as media people, especially news reporters, I'm a right wing news reporter. That will not change. That will never change. But I admire intelligent people and nice people coming into politics. I mean, we all grew up watching Christina Makunama. Yeah, she's NDC, but she's a very decent woman. We remember Mrs. Gladys Asma, Mrs. Christine Checha, very, very decent woman. Joyce Ayi. I mean, some of our women have given us some of the, the most diplomatic expressions in politics. Why is Grace Ayuzu wanting to lower the standard? A nice woman who comes as a medical professional already. Why, why does she want to lower the standard? Because you want to be part of the insulting gang? Rollins called them babies with sharp teeth. I, I thought that we are over and done with that. Even Okujito Ablakwa, who was one of those accused by Rollins, has turned a new corner and is presenting facts and evidence on things that's happened around the world, things that happen in parliament, things that happen at the presidency. He's always talking the facts. It's okay. But that's, that's fine. You may not support him, but that's what he's doing. And now Grace Ayuso wants to be part of those who are the insulting gang. We don't want that in election 2024, please. I hope Ghanaians will not vote for people who are insulting, whether there's NDC or there's MPP. Don't vote for them. Tell them they should debate policy. They should tell us what they are going to do. They shouldn't tell us a woman is a shao. What's, so what should we do? Are, um, are men not a shao? Anyway, <laughs> let me go and talk to my uncle, and then, uh, <laughs> and then I can. Ofakosi Pratt, good evening. How are you? <laughs> we had a conversation today on phone. <laughs> Okay, so let me do it. I'm going, I was going to do it in two parts. I'll do the Kwesi Pratt, take the break, and I'll come and talk my holiday matter. So, producer, please uh, note that I'll do Kwesi Pratt, take the break, and then I'll come and do the holiday matter. Get it out of the way, then we hit Johnson and see I'll be on the highway. So, I was holding this NDC flag the other day, and I was doing my thing, and I was singing a song, and I said, NDC, da 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 da. And I said, Kwesi Pratt is part of it. I even said Manasseh Azuri, Suleiman, Braima, and all that. Kwesi Pratt calls me and says he doesn't like that. He doesn't like those jokes. Okay, so please, viewers, Kwesi Pratt is not part of the National Democratic Congress. He is the owner of the Socialist Forum. He's a member of Nkrumah's CPP. That's what he is. He's not part of NDC. So when I sang that song and said he's part of NDC, please, I'm going to say, I'm sorry. But I've also told Kwesi Pratt that him and I need to do an interview. And then he said that, will you be interviewing me or I will be interviewing you? And I said, whichever way he wants it, I'm willing to abide by it. So viewers, just to put on record, Chrissy Pratt has informed me that he's not a member of the NDC. I knew that he's not a member of the NDC. I was just making a joke so that viewers can relax. I know that Manasseh Azur is not a member of the NDC. I made a joke. Suleiman Brahma is not a member of the NDC. I made a joke. So it's fine. Chrissy, sorry. Anyway, Chrissy Pratt has a statement for us to consider. Please put that on and let me read it very quickly uh, so that we can move on. He has a statement for us to consider. Uh, yeah, there it is. Excellent. It's a statement from the Socialist Movement of Ghana, and it's as follows. Workers worldwide will celebrate May Day, as, uh, a day set aside to promote solidarity in the struggles of working people for better working and living conditions and for the building of a new worldwide free from 
exploitation and oppression. On this occasion, the Socialist Forum of Ghana salutes the working people of Ghana and the world for their steadfast struggle against the underdevelopment imposed on our country by capitalism. The Socialist Forum of Ghana knows that in every epoch of history, the working people of the world have defeated exploitation, whether in the form of slavery, serfdom, classical colonialism, neocolonialism, or imperialism, such as is our history. As we mark May Day 2024, we must reflect on the sorry state of Ghana today. We have all but succumbed to rapidly escalating prices of food, rent, health care, transport, and general services. Today, it takes 14.20 cities to purchase one U.S. dollar. Inflation is hovering around 26% and unemployment around 14%, with an unemployment freeze dictated by the International Monetary Fund and implemented by a callous, unpatriotic, and profligate government. Despite the disaster, the government of Ghana... Uh, Despite the disaster, the government of Ghana adheres slavishly to the neoliberal agenda of privatization of state enterprises and services to cronies, retrenchment of labor, and, com and uh, commercialization of all social services, an agenda which government to government has pursued since the 24, since the 24 uh, February, I believe, 1966 coup, which ousted President Nkrumah. The working people of Ghana have a duty to themselves and the world to struggle to end their hardship and the general state of decay that has engulfed us. We can defeat our deplorable condition of poverty and misery only through a sustained struggle against capitalism. We must assert democratic state control over our resources and process through which they are produced and turned into usable goods to provide sustainable benefits to our people. As workers celebrate May Day, we ask that they remember the plight of the working people of Palestine facing Israeli genocide and has so far claimed 40,000 Palestinian lives, primarily women and children, with the active support of the West led by the United States of America. We must intensify our solidarity with Palestine and demand an immediate and unconditional ceasefire, an end to settler colonial occupation of Palestine lands and the right to return all Palestinian refugees. Viewers, permit me to do this in Chrissy Pratt's voice. The last paragraph. We must intensify our solidarity with the Palestinian and demand the immediate and unconditional ceasefire, an end to settler colonial occupation of Palestine lands, and the right to return to all Palestinian refugees to their homeland. <laughs> On May Day, the Socialist Forum salutes all working people of the world, especially the workers of Ghana and their organizations. Uh, that is a message from the Socialist Forum. Uh, it's not a message for debate, so we're just publishing the message of the Socialist Forum. Signed by Comrade Ambassador Chrissy Pratt. Chrissy Pratt and I are together uh, ambassadors of the Cuban Revolution. Uh, oh, okay, Ejusu is coming in, isn't it? <laughs> Just is coming in. Uh, that's why they. That's why they put that there. That's why they put that there. Okay, great. So out of oh, but I was going to explain my relationship with Kusipa then. So Kusipa and I, we are both ambassadors of the Cuban Revolution. You know, he's an ambassador of the Cuban Revolution. I'm an ambassador of the Cuban Revolution. Fidel Castro and Raúl Castro are our heroes. You know, I've been an ambassador of the Cuban Revolution from age eight. I'm sure Kusi was an ambassador before me, but that, that's, that's why we are friends. You know, whilst I'm right wing and he's left wing, we are both ambassadors of the Cuban Revolution. So please note that if you want to become an ambassador of Cuban Revolution, too, yeah, why not? Let's meet at the Socialist Forum at Koko Mlemle. Uh, when, when do they meet? Wednesday evenings. Let's meet there. The other day I went there, I saw Alaji Hudu Yaya and, uh, and uh, Chuchiro Poku, uh, two of the finest brains in the NDC. Alaji Hudi Aya and Chuchiro Poku are some of the finest brains in the NDC. These guys are very smart. You sit with them, it's really interesting. Because see, I'll come to the Socialist Forum one of these days, and then we talk about the Cuban Revolution. Aluta continua, Che Guevara, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's get to Ejusu and check out what's happening uh, with the results. All right, so out of 105 polling stations, results declared so far. Kwabna Boatin has 19,000, uh, representing 59.9%, uh, almost 60%. And uh, Kwabna Ousu Ediomi has uh, 14,000, representing 42 some, some percent. Ediomi's uh, showing was always going to be impressive because a former member of parliament there, but almost certainly uh, Ediomi will be defeated. But his showing is quite impressive. Maybe he should become the NDC candidate for a juice. So NDC, why don't you do that? 
Just pick a deal me for your, as your candidate for the 2024 elections. He's a former MP, MPP MP. He's gone to Afrafranto. He has left the MPP. Pick him as the NDC candidate. He's getting 14,000 when uh, this guy is getting 19,000. 5,000, maybe you might be able to claw it. I don't think they will. But okay, NDC, you can go for uh, Kwabna Usu Ediomi. But Kwabna Boateng will be elected later tonight, I believe, as the uh, member of parliament for uh, the uh, member of parliament for the Ejusu Duabeni constituency, which is my constituency. So that will be my new MP. Uh, unfortunately, we are still mourning the, uh, the unfortunate departure of John Kuma. Anyway, now we take a break. When we come back, I have a holiday story, and then I switch to Johnson Asidun Ketia. This is Good Evening Ghana. I hope you're enjoying it. Send me your text messages. Thanks for watching. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. All right. Welcome back to the show. It's always a pleasure to bring you the show. Uh, text messages are coming in thick and fast. Amazing. I mean, what's the time now? Okay, it's 10, 27, something like that. Uh, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be getting into the final stretch. Uh, don't, don't go to bed yet. Get a cup of coffee or, or cocoa, and then let's finish. I have some business to say about Johnson. Let's see if get here. Let me see it now. All right. So um, here we go. It's a uh, hello. Hello, chairman. How are you? Yeah, Johnson Asedo Ketia, the chairman of the National Democratic Congress. Before I get to him there, the 24-hour economy is still a big deal, isn't it? 24-hour economy is still a big deal. So there was another explanation. So we have, we have had the policymakers struggling to explain the 24-hour economy. Maybe this guy does a better job. This guy is not a policymaker. He's an NDC full soldier of sorts. He's a, I think he's a constituency organizer. It appears that he probably does a better job on the 24-hour economy than the policymakers. Have a look at it. Listen to it. 24 hours economy. Uh, now, how do you know what you have here? 24 hours economy. What do you have here? Very, very simple. Ah, this is about 10. About 10. About 10. About 10. You have another, another present, uh, uh, another program at Waswa. It's another 24 hours now. You have a question. You have a question. You have a question. Still on Edaho. You from 10 to 11. Yeah, yeah, go off. More point, but uh, another political program, and uh -huh. Another Anambua. The government point, 24 hour economy. That's 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 how that's That's how that's how politics. Yes, no, so was near to us. On the point, apart, not a moment, you know, near when you see the seal and pong, or be unfree as a nice age, money to us. Why, I am born. More point, but a program is a program in the pong, Anambua. Program upon Yapon, she said, and what now, more train. Now go see another time, baby, because also we could have booked them by. We could have booked full book them by. They all say, it was a mecca and a quantity of them coming in set down and dozen. Nagapono, twenty four hours upon the Naga Salate was here. So one one hour, another two hours are. Now you are two so, and there's a twelve, two and a half one, Yapon, your coffee. Namoso Pana for Fraba. Never Fraba. The politics throughout. Never is saying, yeah, another, 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 before. Uh, uh, peace FM in some year this way, we have blah blah blah. So, we are wasting now. Now, almost a bomb go through. Now, I said, one night a cost, never cost, and never my economy. Let me be. Yet, me, I was you can yet be done in ten times. Got the idea of an ocean. Who said all the sacos review? And a twenty four hours. Someone said all the sacos review. So, meaning you are quite a three billion if I am a buyer. Dollar, yes, Tim. Oh, yeah, me, my old. Ah, hey, hey, Gwanzo, hey, Gwanzo, hmm, no comment. Good evening, Chairman. Please, your people at the 24 hour is becoming a problem. But, uh, all right, I'm going to say something about Johnson Asedu Ketia. But, ah, didn't Asedu Ketia also talk about 24 hour economy? I think he did. He definitely did. Here is what Asedu Ketia said about 24 hour economy. He himself, the Chairman himself, I think he got it right. I think he got it spot on. I mean, he's Chairman, so... I think he got it correct. Yes, I see you in Ketia. 24 hour economy. Have a listen. 24 hour economy, no. The Ayabayani say, I buy a bench electricity, boy. I work from Kura. I di ama e juma e fua. Mobe ba juma ana jono ma be ya juma. Enti mu amu ya foundries, mu amu ya welders, mu amu kura kura e ka sini ni ama ni ama mu shia electricity pa ano. More penal for Namu Juma and Fasuaba Mua, 
moba saine na moba ajuma anajo anajo uyu su electricity a na ne bo aye den akọ form wo mu aye ayon ross ene aye amuyu su anyamu awode kese no moba ye mo ajuma anajo a wo be hu se anyamu awode bo be kọ form pa abo amu ama mo nyam faso na mabru no so wo mo anya ajuma aye enti aba na ante ni a chira chira 24 awa economy num na muji tumwa eno eh, eh, game changer ewo eh, omai gan ha no comment electricity will be cheaper in the night than in the afternoon so i just go to work in the night so it's not 24 it's, it's starting from the middle so it's starting from the afternoon so i go to work at 5 p.m because i want i'm doing iron rods i'm a steel bender I want electricity cheaper, according to Asidu Nketia. So don't go to work in the morning. Just go in the night. So if I'm not there in the morning and I'm there in the night, I will not back to the same thing because now they do morning to uh, from 7, 8 o'clock to about 5 p.m. Now you say they should start from 5 p.m. to get cheaper electricity. Everyone wants cheaper electricity. We all, hey, talk about electricity. Get me Herbert Crapper's photograph. We've had another conversation. We've had another conversation. I'll, I'll use it maybe after the second break or just before 11. Get me Herbert Crapper's photograph. I have more information on the electricity situation. So that's what I said in Ketai saying. Anyway, let's get to the reason why we're here. Now, I, I know Johnson Asedu Ketia quite well. I know him. When I say I know him, I don't mean that I see him every day or he's my good friend, but I have studied his psyche because that's what I do. I study politicians. I've been doing that forever. That's, 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 my, that's what I do. I just study politicians. So if you ask me about GH Mensa, I can tell you. If you ask me about Olusegu uh, Obasanjo, uh, I can tell you. If you ask me about Kendall Gaddafi, I can tell you about his philosophy. Maybe one day I'll put a book together on the philosophy of some African politicians I've studied. I've studied Johnson and Sidney This is the thing you need to know about him. Johnson and Sidney always wants to be the line item. He always wants to be the lead item anywhere and in any circumstance. He doesn't present himself as the lead item. How he does it is that he will raise a situation. He will say something. He will generate a narrative. That then becomes the story. So with every big event, I said in Katia's psychology is that attending the event, even when he wasn't party chairman. In fact, when he was party general secretary and uh, Chairman Wayose was chairman, I said in Katia was more prominent. Not because he's taller, bigger or anything, but he has a way of stealing the show using words, narratives, uh, jokes, all of that. He has a way of stealing the show. When Professor Mills was president, every time there's an event, I said we can steal the show. That's how Rollins gave him the name General Mosquito, because he steals the show. That's, that's his psychology. He, it's not good, it's not bad, it's not wrong, it's just his psychology. And he's not the only politician who is like that. So I studied him. So going into the Jenan of Fukuwa Jiman event, I was really focusing on what will Johnson and I said do at this event. What I said Nketia goes to the event to do is to do something that will make him the headline, not Jay Nana the headline, not John Mahama, not Lordina Mahama. It has to be Johnson and Nketia. That is the psychology. When he was invited to speak, he spoke for a very short time. Fifi Kwete had been talking for almost an hour. When the event was still on, if you like, check. Whilst the event was about to close, still on, all the headlines, Joy FM, I will send it to people, I say, look, look, look. Peace FM Online, Ghana Web, they were all headlining I said Nketia's statement. And he made those statements deliberately so that he will be the headline, not Jenna Nopokwajiman being the headline. I don't know whether NBC folks noticed it, but I certainly noticed it because I've been doing that for quite a while. Before I tell you how he did it, let's play a montage for him. He likes that. Johnson, I said, look at montage a little bit.
So I said, okay, so I went to the event of Jenan Nopoku Ajeman. Jenan, this, uh, this is Jenan Nopoku Ajeman's outdooring. This is a candidate who has been um, a running mate in 2020, was not successful, has been renominated by the leader of the party who was also not successful, but has been voted for again as the NDC candidate. So this is a very important event. Meanwhile, President Mohammed's uh, uh, campaign team has not yet been announced. So this is the, the major event since the announcement of the flag bearer. Since the John de Mahama was outdoored by the NDC as his flag bearer, this is the next most important event that they've had. Of course, since the announcement of Jenan Opoku Ajiman, she has had a few engagements, one of which Kusi Ahoy badly slipped on this um, somebody's going to die thing, which was it's been managed better, I think. Uh, you know, it's okay, it's bad. We understand that it's a slip. <laughs> we'll still talk about it, but we know that it's a slip. Now, so after that, the next major event is this one. Asedu Ketia knows that this event is for Professor Jenan Opoku Ajiman. It's not for anybody. So even if you look at President Mohammed's body language, he tried not to say so much. He tried not to do so much. Madam Lodina just came and sat down and, and ex exchanged pleasantries with people. Joshua Labi, all the major NDC people were there. Big, huge NDC people. They were all in the room. The hoys were there. Tutubi Kwachi, Kwame Pepra. Big NDC people. So this is a stage set for Jenana to show what she's made up of. So she was going to have a full speech. So usually the most important person is the last person to speak. Even though President Mahama was there, President Mahama was the last but one person to speak. It was President Mahama's responsibility to introduce Jenna Nopoku Ajiman. Fantastic arrangement in terms of the event. But I said, look at you, I had another mind. He was sitting now quietly looking at them and laughing at them. He was going to teach them some uh, Koko Ase lessons. He was going to teach them some Koko Ase lessons. When he mounted the podium, and he spoke. If you look at the body language of the audience, no one was expecting him to say that. Absolutely no one was expecting Asedu Ketia to go along the, the path that he went. Oh, we haven't won the election. And you people are sharing posts. And then there's some kind of people, and we know who he was talking about. That, who said they are Godfather? We all know who he was talking about, you know? And uh, that, that was quite worrying for me personally, because I know who he's talking about. And the person is kind of innocent and just trying hard to make sure that his brother wins presidency. That's what he's doing. But I said, look at I said, we know the people who say they are Godfather and they will be doing... I sent a text to the guy. I said, Charlie, I said, he's talking about you. Have you heard? He didn't reply. So, but that's I said, look at for you. Watch the video and let me come back and explain further. This is what he said at the Jena no Pokwajiman event. Because we are already convinced that we are there. A lot of people have begun taking positions and fighting over who will be what in the next government. Indeed. Some people are not only fighting about the positions they will occupy. They are telling all others that they will be the key makers and they will be making their appointment. If we are not careful, this will dampen the enthusiasm and the spirit of our followers. So I want to assure everybody that we are not there yet. Don't be fighting about positions. And don't be struggling about who will make appointments. Let us all go for the hunting first, and when we kill the game, we now argue about how to share the meat. <laughs> finally, finally, a lot of us assume. Mm. I don't know what meat is to be shared when when we finally have a game, uh, the meat is to be shared. I, I don't know. We are looking for election to win and gain political power. If that is meat, no problem. That can be shared as meat. Take your neck, take the bottom, take the, the leg. Those, who, those of us who like pig feet, if the meat is pig, you cut the feet for us, we take it away. This one, take it away. I don't know whether the governance system is some meat that they are going to be cutting, cutting and sharing. But anyway, that's what he said. Now, is this an occasion for Asedu Ketia to give this warning? This is Jenna Nopokwajiman's occasion. She's coming to do, she's coming to show hope. 
She's coming to show possibility. She's coming to show readiness for the governance. She's coming to show readiness as running mate, readiness as president. The NDC is showing their, their dual ticket of John Dramani Mahama and Jena Nopokwajiman and suggesting to Ghanaians that this is the ticket you have, must have confidence in. It's a positive atmosphere. Every speech from the, every speech from the podium must evince that positiveness. I said, look at that. He had a mind of his own. He was sitting down quietly watching them. He was looking at them. He said, these people, I will teach them a lesson. Me, I know. That's a psychology. Because otherwise, viewers, can anyone explain to me? This is just, so it's like Dr. Baumia was launched uh, the other day, 2008, after he was named running mate to the surprise of many by Rana Kufado. Baumia comes on the occasion and gives a fantastic speech. And then the chairman of the party in those days, Peter McMenu, comes and says, hey, the thing we haven't won it yet, to those of you, no, no, this is not the occasion to say that. But I said, look, wanted to steal the show for himself. If I said, look, didn't say that, he would not have been part of the headline. He knows that if he didn't say that, he wouldn't have been part of the headline. He wanted to put himself, Fifi Quete spoke for over an hour. Was he part of the headline? He outlined all sorts of things, talk, 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 plenty, talk about how Baumia is desecrating the office of la, 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 la. Nobody mind him. I said, look, he's a very smart man. Though. He knew that this is the story that the media will pick. So he goes to stand there. Where is the evidence? Where is the evidence that NDC people are sharing posts? Where is the evidence? The NDC are sharing posts. And somebody said they will be Godfather. Where is the evidence? But that's the kind of character you have in the NDC chairman. My friend Johnson has said, look at here. That is it. This is what he wanted. This is what I wanted to say last week. I didn't have time to say it. But I wanted to point it out so that the people who are watching the analyst, Imani, uh, frankly, Kujo, those of you who are watching, agree or disagree with me. This is the psychology of the NDC chairman. He comes to the event to make himself the priority, nothing more, nothing less. And he does it very cleverly. He doesn't do it by, 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 by showboating. No, no, no. He does it by generating a narrative. Sometimes a narrative is a joke. But that's what he knows who fly. Jenana is being outdoor. Leave her to be outdoor. Leave her to show off what she can do. Leave her to be the main headline of the thing. Then you come and put yourself inside with this awkward statement about people are fighting for posts. I don't have anything more to. I just have to congratulate him for being such a clever man. Johnson, I say, don't get here. He's an amazingly clever man. He understands politics. He knows what to do, and he's doing it all the time. All right, that's him. Uh, say, congratulations, say, Johnson. I say, don't get here. Give me the final montage of this one. Could see how in Jena no That was your day, and then we can we can leave it here and get on to the next topic. This is good evening, Ghana. It's still live. Let me take my seat. John Arthur Mills, at the age of 68, fell ill and died just a few hours after being admitted. At Atta Mills was to run again, but his party's ticket will now be taken on by Dramani Mahama. To be faithful and true to the Republic of Ghana. John Dramani Mahama is Africa's newest leader. He was sworn in just hours after the announcement of the death of his predecessor, Ghanaian President John Atta Mills. Nana. Be ever prepared, like your motto says. Be ready. Anything can happen. And you can become the president of the Republic of Ghana. So, Nana, be ever prepared, like your motto says. Be ready. Anything can happen, and you can become the president of the Republic of Ghana. That's our message for John Slasidukatia. It's still good evening, Ghana, and uh, we are still live on Metro TV and on Facebook. What are people saying? Uh, shall I begin with Anziba again? Okay, uh, so Anziba, what are they saying? All right, we have Alaji Bob CD saying, Paul, John Mahama himself is struggling to explain the 24 hour scam. But I love Joseph Yamin's explanation. He says, Those selling accounts here on the Accra Highway will continue selling till daybreak. Because the buses on that way will work till the next morning. We have Ni Oko saying, Paul, this NDC and their 24-hour economy 
is just a sham to be put in the minds of Ghanaians. Aren't they not companies and industries in this country that's already run on a 24-hour basis? Their so-called flag bearer should look for a better should look for better alternatives and promises to s and stop using this gym to two tactics. Ghanaians have chosen and the right answer is DMP. We have Kweku Amponsa saying, Paul, can't you see that they have stopped talking about the so-called 24-hour economy? James Brown is saying, Paul, an NDC friend of mine in my hood always gets angry anytime I pick a conversation with him concerning their 24-hour economy policy. It's almost as if they feel entitled to the seat of government that, than explaining their policies to win more hearts and minds. But we shall pursue them to explain. Becoming a, becoming a government is not automatic. It must be diligently earned through the articulation of cogent policy alternatives and not, and not the Adrian Minnesota mentality. Sorry. Kudos to Honorable Dakwa Newman, Minister designate for gender. And from our sponsor, lift and elevate it. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say, but as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It is often, it often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. Worry no more, because with portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are sure of an you are sure of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It is, a simple, it is simple to use self-supported elevators for vertical movement of humans and goods as homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility to choose from. You may call it luxury, but it's an, it is a necessary imperative for vertical mobility. Do not let aging or infirmity limit you. Get one for easy for easy vertical mobility as homes or office. It is affordable and can be installed within three days with modification to your building. Visit Lifts and Elevators Ghana as a Kumuno for your solutions and free consultations. Call us now on 0200-535-515, 0200-535-515, or email at elevatorsghana elevatorsgh at gmail.com elevatorsgh at gmail.com Sarah okay. So coming from El General he says hello Paul I simply can't stop laughing listening to NDC explanation on this 24 hour economy thing they're just not being serious and from George Forrest he says palm wine tapa way of explaining 24 hours economy from our sponsor Blue Jeans Energy Drink Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been on the Ghanaian market for over 20 years. We already know what it does for the body. It contains vitamins and nutrients like vitamin B2, B3, B6, B12, as well as taurine and guarana, which are known to boost your strength and energy, as well as promote high performance and endurance. Blue Jeans Energy Drink has been tested and tried. It is indeed the best. Blue Jeans Energy Drink is for bold and active men and women. So go on, grab a cold can, and power your day. It is in shops nationwide. For bulk purchases, contact Budget Cash and Carry Limited on 0208-128-190, 0208-128-190, or 055-001-0000, 055-001-0000. Zero zero one zero 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 zero. What do you have for us, Mami? Okay, coming from the perspective of Julius Amwako, ONDC, a political party that have been in position for seven and a half years, can't even come out with any policy, and now they're saying 24-hour economy, which they themselves can't even understand. But I'm asking, is the 24-hour economy a policy? And also from Alex Barton, he says, please let Akwesi Prats know that socialism doesn't build a country. Over to you, Angelo. Nightmare. Uh, on every platform you engage the NDC on the 24-hour economy, there is attacks or insults. They've bitten more than they can chew. What a trauma to endure by the NDC now. 
Uh, Elder Saki from Kumasi says, Good evening, Ghana. Good evening, Ghanaians. Good evening, Ejisu. Good night and sound sleep. Uh, Honorable Kwabina Usu Ejwame. And lastly, do you know Akbar says, you see, sometimes I don't understand NDC people. They're imposing something on the good people of this nation and they're asking you to explain and it's a problem. Again, this really shows that they have nothing to offer the good people of Ghana. Uh, but um, he says uh, to you, Paul, but Uncle Kwesi is a sympathizer of the NDC. No one can dispute that. He himself knows it's a fact. Anyway, Paul, back to you. Uh, all right, so um, we will... Uh, we have some uh, a short interview. We, we changed a few things for tonight, sorry, because we're running out of time. What's the time now? We have 10 minutes, something like that to go. We have an interview with two doctors. You know, I like these young people who go to school and work and learn so hard to become doctors. I like them. Uh, so I'm going to have an interview with the two of them, and, uh, and they'll talk, talk to us about what they are here to do. I, I guess I'll sit here and conduct the interview, uh, Mr. Producer, so that should be fine. Uh, but just before we do that, let's go and... Uh, Dr. Balmia is out there. He started his campaign. Uh, do we have any latest on Ejusu now? Okay, if we don't, then... Uh, Dr. Balmia started his campaign, so uh, we want to play this montage for him as he hits the road. We understand that Professor Jena Nopokwa will also be beginning a campaign from next week or so in the central region. Uh, our reporters will be there and uh, we will also be following up on what she's doing. But this is to Dr. Baumia and his campaign team. Uh, please be on safe on the road. God be with you. Allah be with you. Uh, drive carefully. Uh, uh, don't be too late for the assignment. Don't let people wait for you. We always hear that in campaign stories. They were waiting from 8 p.m. and then you go there at 4 a.m. Uh, hopefully that will not happen. Miracle Sabuaji and all the people on the, um, on, on the team, uh, we, we, we wish you well. And get us the information as quickly as you can. And I like the photographs that they've already sent. I can't use them today, but on Thursday I'll use them. Uh, good luck to Dr. Balmia on his campaign. And uh, may the rose be safe for him. You know, there is uh, uh, something called Doctors Beyond Borders. I don't know whether viewers know about that. Now, I have, I have Doctors for Christ in the studio. They are doing BYG, a worship situation which is also going to heal people. Uh, so let me go to my two doctors in the studio. Thank you very much for coming. And congratulations. You all look very young. You are young doctors. <laughs> are you enjoying your work? Thank you, sir. Yes. Is the government treating yeah. you well? <laughs> um. <laughs> you, know, you know, don't say Somehow. it. It's okay. <laughs> When you go to the GMA meetings and you say there. Sure. Okay, 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 all right. So are you both working in Accra? Yes, please. So let me start with you, Dr. T. What's BYG? So BYG stands for Behold Your God. It's a, Behold Your God. Yes. It's a verse from the Bible, Isaiah 40, verse 9, mm -hmm. which points us uh, to the personality of God and how that God is interested in every aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. So it's um, music, uh, worship, and medical outreach. Um, it entails um, a health screening program as well as a, a worship concert, uh, which is happening this Saturday, 4th of May. Worship Saturday, 4th of May? Yes. Where? Um, at Kolibu. Um, we are both doctors in Kolibu. So uh, we're having the concert in the evening at the ONG conference room in Kolibu. But the medical screening is happening in Kolibu. The medical screening for who? For the community uh, in Kolibu. So it's what are you looking out for in the screening? Yes. COVID, so, HIV. Yes, malaria, um, hypertension, diabetes, all these chronic diseases that um, have become rampant these days. So we are doing the screening to um, arrest.
some of these conditions at their early stages before they become um, detrimental. So they're supposed to come for free? Yes, it's, it's going to be for but free. But do you, do you have an anticipation of the numbers that you're going to be dealing with? Uh, our target population is 300. But you could get more than 300. If you're talking Kolegono... Yes, it's definitely going to be more. Dan Soman can come through, you know. Yes, Manprobi. Yeah, Manprobi can come through, yeah. So, so you could have 700. It's, it's possible. <laughs> how many doctors are volunteering for this? Um, Jerry, how many do we have? At the moment, we have five doctors. One, two, three, four, five. So, so we have five doctors. We have a number of nurses. Um, we have pharmacists also involved. Oh, but the doctor's five is kind of small. You have a laboratory people there? Yes, yes, we are working on that as well. So you will do the test and give them results quickly or yes. later? Or for the rapid right test. There. Okay, so the screening is Saturday morning. Yes. yes. Then in the evening, you are asking them to come for the worship. Exactly. Yes. All of us can come for the worship? Yes, oh, of course. Who is, who is leading the worship? Uh, well, I'm the host. But oh, you sing as well? Yes, I sing Oh, as well. nice. <laughs> so like you can sing yes, like Don Moyen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but there are other um, amazing ministers of God. We have Pastor Isaiah Fosukwachi coming through. Pastor who? Isaiah Fosukwachi Jr. Isaiah Fosukwachi, okay. Yes. There's mm -hmm. Elvis Bento um, from Joyful Way. And then there's Dr. Dela. There's also Dr. Kokobin. Yes, and myself. So we'll be singing. So, so there is, is five people singing? Or you yes. have a choir that's backing you? Yes. Okay, so for my team, mm -hmm. I have a a, a choir okay i'm going to sing with uh, the others may also come with their team i see or not yes what about refreshments after the worship oh well, we don't worship jesus christ <laughs> when he well, when he of, preached of for course. three days he told his disciples that the people were hungry so yeah, they should go right. and look for food and peter didn't want anybody to eat so peter said there's no food and christ <laughs> said don't worry you will find food and they said oh jesus it's been three days so all the food said don't worry go and bring me food. <laughs> But they say, yeah, we found something, but it's nothing. He said, what did you find? He said, three loaves. He said, yeah, bring it. So if you say we should come to worship you, we should eat. It's we'll, we'll, we'll Friday night. It. Saturday, Saturday night. night. Uh, but Sunday we're going to church. We mm -hmm. have to leave home early. Mm -hmm. We'll take two to circle before we come to college. <laughs> so, you know, if you say we should eat, it's there. Or, or we can make some contribution. Are you raising funds? Yes, we are. Uh -huh. So yes. good evening, Ghana can pay something. Yes, absolutely. Okay, okay. We'll pay 500 CDs from all of us oh, wow. to help the situation. So you can buy out your more and something. Another person will yes, give 500. Please. Another person will give 500. Then it will work. You see. All right. Doctors, you can't be wicked. You have to do the worship. <laughs> and then you also let us eat, you see. So that will be. How many people, how many people does the room take? Uh, the conference room takes about 200. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. That's not bad. Okay. And so you're hiring instruments and all that? Yes. We are how are you raising that. the money for it? Your own resources? Uh, partly, but we are also reaching out to people to. So one number can people funds. call? You know, there are lots of Christians who watch the program. You oh know. sure, uh, Supreme Court judges. And, <laughs> yes, and, uh, your own yes, number. Yes. We yes. send the mobile money to you. Yes. <laughs> but if it comes to your phone, the mobile money will it go out of oh, the phone? Yes, sure, it will go okay, out because you're a pastor, so we can trust you. <laughs> okay, fine. So what number should people? Uh, uh, zero two four six. Zero two four six viewers, please. Three six. Three six two 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 three six. Oh, that's nice. Three six two two three six. Yes. Okay. So, are you married? Not yet. Oh, I was going to say that when I'm sure when you're in medical school, it was easy to give your number to the ladies because it's three six <laughs> two two three six. But if that, now that you are still not married, so you are still giving your number to the ladies. It's a very easy number for people yeah, to remember. Very, very easy. So, do they remember it easily, or they have to still? I don't remember. They remember it easily. They remember it easily. <laughs> so you are lucky. <laughs> He's also not married. Eh? No, no, not yet. Ah, the doctors they don't marry early these days. Oh, eh? When I was in school, the doctors they marry by oh. fifth year. They already know who they are oh, getting yeah. married to. Oh, right. ah, but you know who you are getting married to? Not yet. Hey, people are listening. Oh. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> you have told the lady oh, that. Yeah, oh, then are, you say you say not yet. On the road, okay, you have somebody you are thinking with. I'm thinking about. Somebody you are thinking about. Does she know you are thinking about her? Not yet. And does she <laughs> know if she watches this video that she's the one you are talking about? No, not yet. Or two of them will think it's all of them will yes. think it's them. <laughs> All of them will think it's them. Okay, okay. God will decide. God will decide. By the grace of God. <laughs> also, Doctor, you also don't mind. No. But this year, maybe next year. <laughs> next year. So between now and next year, you'll be there till next year. Well, I'll be there. Do. I'll be there already. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. You've done well. You've done well. You've done well. Please, ladies, you have a question for them because they are doing something very serious and important. 
Oh, but I like the combination of so what church do you fellowship with though? I fellowship with Dominion Chapel International. So Pastor Dominion. Isaiah. Dominion. Yes. Ah yeah, he's your pastor, yeah. Yes, that's yeah. my pastor. Okay, 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 okay. And, and you yeah. same church? Oh, Maker's House Chapel International. Bodin Yeah. Ah, Dr. Baumi, I was there the other day. Yeah. I... Napotu has been going there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Reverend Bodin Yamiche is a very intelligent man. Oh, yeah. Very... Yeah, Bodin Yamiche. I know him. I know him. That's, they have a beautiful auditorium. Oh, yeah. I hear it's like a, a cinema hall. Yeah. And then they do selfie on Sunday. They do the, the <laughs> selfie stick. All the ladies have the selfie stick on Sunday. I hear it's a very lovely church. Oh, very Can I come there on Sunday? Oh, sure. Okay, yeah, okay, 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 okay. Good. All right, so Saturday. Yes, sir. And the screening is free. Yes, it's free. Okay, how often do you want to do this? Is it a, a yearly something? Yes. Who's okay. organizing it, by the way? I am organizing it. Okay, so it's an individual organization, so it's a group. Yes, it's a group. So I'm with a team. Okay, excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So okay. we are we are looking forward to having it um, annually. Okay. And going to different communities and expanding. Yeah. So you move from Kolebu to another place yes. to another place. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me give some big ups to your friends. Whose secondary school did you go to? I went to Armed Forces. Armed Forces yes. in Burma Camp? Yes, Burma Camp. So you can salute? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you? Ashimota School. You're in Ashimota? Yeah. Uh, were you in Agri House? Oh, no. Oh, then that's not Ashimota. If you're oh. a boy, you go to Ashimota. <laughs> you don't go to Agri House. They say you oh. went to Ashimota. Oh, no, no, no. no, no don't no, say that. No, don't no. say that. Agri, no, those Lugard Agri, and those things. No, no, Lugard, no. Lugard, ah. no. So which one? Kwapon House. Kwapon? Yeah. Ah. Bukase's House. And that's Everybody. better than Agri? Oh, by far. Okay, okay. <laughs> At the moment, I'm not too sure. Uh, about okay. that. But when you were there, oh yes, hey. you guys made sure that oh, couple yes. was better. consistent. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, who do you want to acknowledge as we we discuss the end? Who do you want to talk about? Who has helped you? Uh, okay, I want to acknowledge my pastor, Pastor Isaiah Kwachi mm -hmm. Jr., whose uh, mentorship and leadership has shaped me spiritually. Um, up until this point. Um, when I told him about the program, he was excited and he offered his support and he was willing to come through to be a blessing to us. So my first acknowledgement to him. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to acknowledge the doctors in Kolibu. <laughs> All the doctors in Kolibu? Yes, who okay. have trained us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're uh, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And giving us uh, the opportunity to also um, be a blessing medically to the community. Are you in the same kind of field? Are you the same? Uh, uh, you do the same discipline? Same department? At the moment. Yes, at the moment. Are you specialist yet? Not yet. Okay, so you are, you are both in the same department? Yeah. Yes. Uh, which department is that? Child, Child health. health. Child Health. Who is yes. the boss there, Dr. What? Dr. Prof. Christabel Lai. Lai. Professor Christabel Lai. Okay, so we, we thank her oh, yeah, yeah, we thank uh, for mentoring you guys. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is that how you want to continue as doctors in that area? Uh, or you're going to no. change to do something? We're going to change. Yeah. All right, you change. <laughs> God be with you. Okay. So let us know if people contribute uh, because you came on the program and you mentioned your number. All right. uh, we have committed to 500, which we will do. Okay. Uh, Apriku, the producer, will give it to you. So, All right. So don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. Is there any message for them on the phone? Uh, otherwise, we just go and take a, a commercial break as uh, we finalize. Okay, so uh, it's commercial break time now. At the tail end of the show, uh, okay, it's off. All right, okay, so no commercial break. All right, so we just leave it uh, uh, here uh, at this time. That, viewers, that's it for Good Evening Ghana. Always a pleasure coming to you. The doctors will be live screening at Kolegono on Saturday. So if you live in that area, uh, they're happy to have you. Just be there early. What time are you starting? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. They start at 9 a.m. So just be there early and then we can deal with it. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>